This is One on One. We are honored to be joined by Mr. Richard Willett, head of school at the uh, Newark Boys Chorus School, and also Christian Mansour, an eighth grader, a student at the Newark Boys Chorus School. Good to see both of you. Thank you. Um, eighth grader, and you were saying right before, you, you loved singing way back? Uh, when I was very young, at a young age, around the age of four. You knew you had a great voice? N not at the time, but you know, I started to realize it as I grew older. So my mom wanted to bring me here to Newark Boys Chorus School. Now here's the deal. Now his brother went? He graduated last year. Is that, is that what happens sometimes? Yes. So describe for folks who don't know how great this school is, what it is, and why it matters so much to these young men. Well, it's a, it's a terrific school to get an academic education. If, uh, kids do well there. They go on to high school and college. They're very successful. What are the ages? They're in grades four to grade eight. But the real magic of the school is the singing. They spend almost half their school day in rehearsing and voice lessons and keyboarding and music theory. And they travel. They travel. Where do they travel to? All over the world. Come every, on. Every, every three years, they go to a different country. Uh, they've been to uh, Japan, to open Disney World. They've been to China, South Africa, Russia. New, Where have uh, you been? New Zealand. I actually are into international tours this year. So this year, we're planning to go on to South America. How great is it going to be for them? Be terrific. Our, our goal is really to go to Cuba. Uh, it's a very special place uh, for music. Uh, we're trying, we're writing, we uh, doing some jazz uh, mm -hmm. renditions of songs that are made famous by Newark uh, personalities from the past, and we hope to go to, to uh, Havana and share them with the people down there. How long has the school been around? Uh, Forty-seven years. Wow. Why did it start? It started uh, in the late 60s uh, when the New Jersey performance, when the New Jersey Symphony uh, wanted to do Nutcracker and wanted some middle school age voices. And they recruited uh, students from the Newark City Schools and they had the choir for four years and then they decided because it took so much time away from mm. the school that they were going to start their own school. And they did and we've been around ever since. Now you sing second alto. For those of us who don't know exactly what that means, explain it. So second alto is just like the lower your voice is, the, the more like the, you're placed in different categories. So first soprano is when like, your voice still hasn't changed yet and second soprano also. But while you're like, if your voice is changing, you move down. So second soprano is when your voice starts to change, alto, and then alto two when your voice is starting to go through that. So let me ask you this. You have decisions to make about uh, you have options for high school, right? Have you decided yes. yet? Well, I'm still searching. I have six options. Six? And, yes. It's, it's great to have options. Yes. Do you think you'll keep singing? Singing, yes. What makes you so confident that singing will be part of your life? Well, because it's what I learned here at NBCS, and being here at NBCS was a, is a really big part of my life. So I'm certain that I'll keep singing even after I leave. What about if people say to you, Christian, wow, that's a lot of hours every day to be singing and practicing and be so disciplined, you say? I'd say that it's teaching me a lot of things. Like um, this discipline is teaching me so much while well, I'm here in NBCS. What does it do for these kids? It turns them into very wonderful citizens. It's a, it's very, citizens. It's a very magical school. These kids, uh, when you sing all, most of your school day and you have to cooperate with everybody else and it goes on every day for the school year, you become a real, you, you have to cooperate with other people. And when these boys leave that school, their lives have changed forever. Uh, they may not sing for the rest of their lives, but they, the lessons they learn there outside of the classroom go, stay with them forever. And one of the things uh, I, I imagine they learn is interacting with other kinds of people. So the diversity, we're about to meet the other young men who are in the chorus. Um, how diverse? Everyone is different there. Uh, I would, we have people from South, uh, students whose parents came from South America, uh, from all through the islands, from Africa, Europe, uh, and they're all, they all blend together. They're all different. You'll see that when they come out to perform. Now, you have to have a good voice to be in the chorus. 
I would say no. I would no? say that when you get there, they, they test you, so you have to have some aptitude. But during the time that you're there, these, these young men learn how to sing and sing well. And, and, but how about, beyond the technical part of singing, real quick, we have a minute left before we, we listen to them. How much of what they learn is about time management and teamwork and the other parts of life that will help them for the rest of their lives? I think those are the most important things. By far, because you can't you can't sing in a choir without managing your time when you're away from the choir, uh, because they travel. They they'll be traveling to Baltimore and to Georgia and to New England, and they still have to keep up with their studies, and that's not easy mm. when you're on a bus, you know, all day long. Mm. Real quick, before your your colleagues come out, you know what they're going to be singing? Uh, they're singing a song called "Give Us Hope." Give us hope. Well, I'll tell you what. Because of you. And the young men that are about to join you, I know I speak for a lot of people in the public television community that uh, you're the kind of young men that uh, gives us reason to have hope, particularly those of us who are um, citizens of and connected to the city of Newark and believe in this city. You should be proud of yourself. A lot of people are. Thank you. Okay? Yes. Stay with us for a terrific performance right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and by the New Jersey Performing Arts Center, in cooperation with NJTV and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato at NJ Pack has been provided by TD Bank, Cone Resnick, Gibbons PC, Barnabas Health. 
the Fidelco Group, the Northward Center, and by the New Jersey Education Association. Promotional support provided by NJ.com. Small news, big news, true Jersey. And by NJ Biz. All business, all New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine. Serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.